For years, the one and only puppet master in the world of horror has been Charles Mann. The writer, director, and producer of over 300 movies, including the infamous Puppet Master and Subspecies film series, Charles Mann just doesn't stop pushing out his offbeat flicks of terror that have been fan favorites for more than two decades. But don't believe me, here's the guy himself. So, Charles, what can all your fans expect from you in Full Moon Direct in the coming month? You know, we, we've been doing this for a long time, and luckily we have a lot of amazing fans. You know, I've been making two or three movies a year now during these more tricky years, but I just decided a year ago that it was time to step up and uh, throw all caution to the wind and, you know, make uh, some of the films that I've wanted to make but just not, I've not been able to. So we shot uh, a sequel to Demonic Toys in Italy at a castle, which was uh, really an experience that was uh, done a couple months ago to come out in December, sort of a evil toys for Christmas gift. And um, I shot a new movie, it's not a sequel to anything, but I did a film I directed called Skullhead, and that's going to be out. It's actually out in a few systems now, but it'll be out in early October. Uh, sort of a haunted castle tale. Very, very, uh, very happy with the film. Uh, Robin said needs the lead. She's amazing. And we also just finished shooting, literally just weeks ago, uh, finally, after years, a sequel to the ninth sequel, really, uh, the ninth in the series of Puppet Master. It's called Puppet Master Axis of Evil. And we had to go all the way to China to find the right location where we could get all the production value and build all the sets that we've been, uh, you know, that, that are required in the script. So uh, David, I mean, I was there, but David Dakota directed the film. David and I go back many years. He's done a lot of films for me, and he did. Uh, he directed Puppet Master Three. Uh, and I thought he'd be the right guy for this puppet master since it also takes place in that same World War II era. And uh, so Dave is uh, Dave did a great job. It's in post-production now. And that's going to come out either late January or early February. And then we're back to China in a few weeks, um, in a week actually, shooting a sequel to a strange little movie we made some years ago called Killjoy. We actually made Killjoy 1 and 2. This is Killjoy 3. A little new spin on it, and... Uh, I think it's the right time for a crazy, just not clown movie. Um, and then uh, a little later in the year, we're going to be shooting uh, another Ginger Dead Man film because uh, that's a strange, uh, you know, but uh, well-received series that we started a few years ago. Um, and that show is uh, <laughs> well. Part two is called Passion of the Crust, so that strange enough as a subtitle. But this third one is called Ginger Dead Man Three: Saturday Night Cleaver. I think the, the title says it all. So this is definitely a departure. This is more edgy humor, you know, out there the material, whereas for the most part the other films are pretty straight up full moon films that we've we've been known for over the years. So it's it's a it's an aggressive production schedule. Sounds like it. Man, you are one busy dude. So another question for you. How is all this uh, new, the new advances in technology and uh, digital media affected your movie production and distribution? You know, we're so many things going on, but we have definitely uh, geared up to make, uh, produce, and release. In some cases, the sequels to the films were more more well known for. Uh, not easy because they're more ambitious than what I've been making over the last four or five years because it's I'm in a business that ebbs and flows and uh, you would think of all the technology and all the new amazing systems and download and iTunes and you know, you know it would be sort of a, a golden era for people who make small independent films but the truth of the matter is uh, we're sort of in a transition stage where you know a lot of people aren't you know are still kind of looking at DVDs but not as many so DVDs kind of drying up and even though, you know, if you go to Apple, you can download a movie. Most people, you know, don't have the Apple TV or a way to put it on, a, you know, a big screen. So it's not really happening. Wow. Well, now you're doing something special this month. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the road show? For the fourth year now, back on the road, uh, the whole month of October, I'll be going all over the country doing 20 cities with the Full Moon Horror Roadshow, which I'm really excited about. It's 
unique for someone to be able to go out and, you know, do something crazy and fans show up. And, you know, I've made so many movies over, you know, a long time that uh, luckily, <laughs> you know, it's hard to miss some of them. So this is a, this is sort of like a, a rock and roll band goes on the road. It's, it's probably not too different. We, you know, don't have the budget to do a lot of, or buy any media or do anything that would be so cost prohibitive today. So, you know, how do you get the word out? How do you keep people excited? And what do you do that's different? Well, you know, a rock and roll band will go out and perform around the country, you know, and uh, I'm kind of doing the same, you know, showing clips from new movies, old movies, telling crazy stories, doing stuff on stage. It's, it's, it's hard to describe the show. It's sort of a demented variety act, but uh, people seem to like it. We get anywhere from, depending on the venue of the city, two to 800 people show up and you know, they certainly have seen the movies over the years so all this is in the next few months so it's definitely a busy period cool cool i know all about demented i'm excited about this road show so anyway it sounds like after all these years you're still busting your butt to stay creative and fresh and in touch with all your fans yeah you have to it's just it's it's the world is just so Different. I mean, we, I, when I started, I mean, none of this existed. You made, you know, a B movie was a B movie because it was on the B side of a double bill. You, your picture only played theatrical if you were lucky enough to get it on some screens, a lot of drive-ins, and that was the whole world. You know, there was no internet. There was none of this. There was no accessibility to any entertainment other than whatever they served up on free TV, which, as it relates to genre films, were few and far between. And when you saw them, they were. You know, they were showing late at night and they were cut up. So the fact that today you, it's just a, you know, a, a, a embarrassment of riches in a way. You can get movies in so many different ways. You can download them and upload them and pay-per-view them and rent them and buy them. And, you know, there's just, there's just so much that, uh, you know, how do you break through? How do you do something different? So luckily I've got this body of work and that kind of helps me. And, and I don't know, maybe I'm a glutton for punishment because, you know, 20 cities in 30 days is definitely pretty crazy, but there, there's there's great joy in getting out there and, and meeting a lot of people and seeing people that I've seen before on the road, and and people just seem to have a great time, so we're, you know, we, we, we never cover our costs, this is just to, you know, just to do something unique and special and hopefully make people aware of upcoming films, because, uh, you know, the, the ticket price is only $10, <laughs> I think we yeah, had all the tickets we're going to sell, that just probably covers gas to send our big rig with full of stuff and our roadies around the country it's not cheap anymore to do any of this but it's uh, I think it's, it's it's really been amazing and I'm, it, part of me is really looking forward to it wow it is so unreal that you could even travel a country with a show like this and charge only ten dollars a ticket that's like the cost of a burger and fries you know, I want people to come and not go oh, man it's too expensive you know I had a lot of people say Charlie that's ridiculous ten dollars you know cheaper than a first-run movie, but, you know, it's like a party. People come to, these places all are attached to or adjacent to or part of a bar because, you know, drinking is a lot of, really important as part of the experience. So, you know, people have a drink or two or three and enjoy themselves and watch a crazy show and I hang out later and uh, it just becomes, you know, like friends get together. So it's, it's, it's the right sort of thing and the right venue and I, there's no other way to do it. I, I don't know how to do it uh, otherwise. So we'll just get out there and uh, be, you know, trucking around the country. That's all right. You just got to get out there. So tickets are on sale now on your website. How's it going? Are you selling out these road shows? Because the venues are all relatively small, I'm, I'm going. I mean, we we have a few that are big, but they're they're anywhere from I don't know 150. A few of them, most of them are at two two fifty. We already sold about. I don't know, about a third of the tickets, which is kind of a cool thing, considering we're still a month, or in some cases, two months away. Charles, man, thanks again for talking to us. It's been wonderful. And uh, we'll be seeing you at the Roadshow in St. Louis. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. 